Hello. Hello. Am I audible now? Hello. I guess it's audible now. In between, there was there was some issue. If you face any issues no in between uh, please let me know i'll check it out thank you so much uh, akash for pointing it out okay so i hope uh, it's audible now and uh, the you you, are, you can see the board is also visible for you and my voice is also clear for you so let's uh, continue with the section so when it comes to uh, the this particular question of geomorphology uh, where we have to discuss with the geomorphic landforms associated with the geomorphic process each landform and what particular process is causing the causing the formation of the landform so here sandur is the another terminology for outwash plane so outwash plane is actually associated with which particular terminology it is not coastal it is not uh, ka, 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 <coughs> it is not uh, glacial uh, so, Karstic, it is not a uh, periglacial, it is actually a glacier fluvial landform. Why it is a glacier fluvial landform? Because outwash plain form after the formation of a uh, uh, glaciation period, later on when glacier starts melts, at that particular time causes formation of an outwash plain. So, Kettle Hall is a glaciated landform, uh, Sandur is a glacier fluvial landform. Next terminology is uh, Eastvale and Glaub. Glaub is a coastal landform. Glaub is also another terminology for, you might have heard of the term B L O W H O L E, blowhole. Like uh, when the collapsing of a cave happened uh, at the top, of an opening on the top of the cave, that is what is called as blowhole. Blowhole, when the, especially we use the term blowhole when the wave uh, water comes into the uh, like uh, through the because of high wave energy water will come uh, goes through the cave and reaches to the comes through the top that's what is uh, called as blowhole so glaub is another terminology for this hence it is a coastal it is related to coastal processes next one is east whale east whale is actually associated uh, uh, associated with uh, the uh, east whale is a cast topography related terminology that is actually uh, we can say it is a sinkhole or a pole j so it depends upon uh, a, a simple ground opening that is also a ground opening depending upon the weather situation sometimes if there is huge amount of water supply is there then this sink uh, will act as a source of fresh water sometimes the condition of season is different then it will act as a a sink where it will uh, uh, causes the river water or the stream water to disappear at that particular opening. So, Estevali is it, uh, associated to cast topography that is why it is karstic associated with karstic process. It is simply an opening on the ground depending on the weather condition or the season it can serve either as a sinkhole or as a source of fresh water. So, that is what is called as Estevali. So, all the terminologies <clears throat> easy question but you should know what is uh, them like uh, they may not give what is uh, an outwash plain ter uh, terminology instead they have give a sandu terminology to make it confuse so always whenever we learn learn it completely okay <coughs> next one is uh, is uh, statement a most hydrographs tend to be positively skewed statement b uh, during the rain event, flow tends to increase rapidly above base, for base flow as various forms of runoff becomes concentrated on the valley floor. Once the rain stops, it takes considerable time for the flow to return to base flow condition. This is the question. So, here this is again another easy question and hydrographs are 
I have already mentioned that it's very important. Hydrographs are very, very important. Positively skewed means this is the situation. Discharge versus time. That's what is hydrograph. So, uh, obviously, both the statements are correct over here. Uh, statement A says that most of the hydrographs tend to be positively skewed. A yes, it is correct. Most of the hydrographs tend to be positively skewed. Then why it is positively skewed? Because initial time during uh, this is time over here and this is discharge. Initially the ti uh, initial time because of rapid base flow like during the rain event uh, it flow tends to increase rapidly above the base flow as various forms of runoff become concentrated on the valley floor. Once the rain stops can, uh, it takes considerable time to the flow for the flow to return to the base flow. Hence, it will the discharge value will decrease slowly over here. So, hence the answer is both the statements are correct. I will show you a bit details. Let us discuss a bit detail about uh, hydrograph because it is very important and uh, they repeatedly ask about that topic. Let us have a small uh, discussion about hydrograph in uh, detail. <coughs> so, look at over here. So, I hope you can see the picture. So, y axis is uh, seasonal discharge shown over here. This is the pink color line. This is the hydrograph. This part of hydrograph is called as rising limb. This, this is the storm flow. And this part of the uh, hydrograph is, is recession limb. Then comes the base flow over here. This is base flow. Recession limb, rising limb, base flow, storm flow. So here this blue color part, this is actually defining the rainfall intensity. So, peak of rainfall is happening over here, peak of discharge is taking place over here. So, the duration between peak rainfall and peak discharge is called as lag time. Duration between peak rainfall and peak discharge is called as lag time. So, here why they have uh, defined about uh, the lag time in detail or like what is the importance of lag time or why there is a lag time. There is a lag time simply because after the rainfall to takes place, the valleys have to collect the water and then the water have to move through the major river. So, it takes time to collect the water even if rainfall is going on. So, if after the peak rainfall, then, uh, then only peak discharge will take place. Now, there are some uh, terminologies that do affect the hydrographs, uh, hydrograph of a particular basin. So, what is an hydrograph means hydrographs are simple. They illustrate the activity of water during a specific time. Uh, uh, so the how water discharge happen, discharge is taking place with time is what is defined by hydrograph. You can uh, use uh, hydrographs of a particular river basin for annual hydrograph, monthly hydrograph or uh, for a single seasonal hydrograph. You can um, draw one to understand the discharge rate and the uh, discharge rate and the base flow etc happened. So, the top over here, <coughs> this part defines the flow happening, discharge happening because of rainfall. This is the base flow. Okay. Now, when it comes to the hydrograph terminology, hydrograph can be affected by the size of the basin. Uh, the drainage basin size can uh, affect the hydrograph. So, if the size is smaller, for a smaller basin, it takes less time to uh, drain the entire water to the river if the basin size is smaller. So, in that particular time, the lag time will be much shorter. So, you can mention these uh, ter uh, terms if you want to. If uh, when it comes to size of the basin or uh, if the size of the basin is very small, lag time will also be much lesser because it takes very less time to drain all the water uh, into the river. So, it results only a shorter lag time. When it comes to shape of the basin, <coughs> uh, it also affects the uh, drainage situations like if the basin is very long and narrow. If we draw the basin in this particular way, 
a very long and narrow basin so in this this is the situation of basin and uh, river channels long and narrow basin situation so here water takes longer time to reach the mouth of the river so here the lag time will be much higher when it comes to relief relief can also affect the hydrograph uh, steeper the basin more quickly it drains the water so steeper the basin more shorter will be the lag time then <coughs> Uh, precipitation form of precipitation if it is a very heavy storm like more amount of less amount of uh, this infiltration capacity of, so of uh, soil will will be like filled faster so it must be much of the water will be over overland flow will be happening rather than infiltration so rapid rise in the river water takes place uh, during the heavy storm activity that means high amount of discharge if it is a lengthy rainfall the ground will be completely saturated overland flow will also be taken so that will be reflected in the hydrograph uh, so it, forms of precipitation will also affect the shape of the hydrograph or the pattern of the hydrograph same way vegetation uh, affects the hydrograph whether there is a vegetation it reduces the discharge because it intercepts the precipitation and adds to rate of evaporation evapor transporta uh, transportation more and also root of the plant will reduce the through flow so more infiltration will happen so more the uh, through flow will be reduced hence interception is less sorry interception will be more if vegetation is more over there uh, if if the depending upon the soil type whether if there is a permeable soil or if there is an impermeable soil that also will be reflected in hydrograph uh, if the rock type vary drainage uh, in uh, different drainage basin for example permeable uh, permeable means the water will allow through water will water will allow uh, pass through the grains right infiltration will be possible if it is permeable impermeable means water it will not allow water to penetrate through so permeable rocks can be anything porous rocks porous and permeable rocks so they uh, like imp they will not encourage the overland flow much so it takes time for the discharge to increase peak discharge to reach whereas if it is an impermeable layer then the more rapid increase in the discharge will happen because more and more overland flow will take place and huge amount of flood and everything can be taking space uh, if it is an impermeable soil present on the drainage basin or impermeable rock rock type is present in the drainage basin so this is these are the then there are drainage in density also matters higher the density greater the risk of flooding uh, then urbanization can also impact uh, also there are uh, questions have asked based on the shape of the uh, drainage basin how hydrograph will vary depending upon the shape of the drainage basin this positively skewed hydrograph can become a negatively skewed hydrograph if the shape is different for example if the shape is in this way this is the shape of the drainage basin drainage basin shape is in this particular way so it is elaborated over here narrower towards the mouth in this particular condition in the second figure situation the uh, hydrograph can be in this particular way because it takes too much time it, the time required for the peak to reach is much higher than the situation of if the situation is entirely opposite if it is like this stream is going in this particular way this is the mouth over here in this particular case the discharge will be it is a positively skewed hydrograph uh, the discharge will be like the peak discharge will be attained much more faster so shape of the basin has a very important factor uh, long narrow one will be affecting differently different shape whether where the area larger whether it is larger near the source area or the uh, the basin area is larger near the mouth area depending upon that also 
the shape vary. Uh, so this you can see uh, there are materials even there is a Instagram post detailed post regarding hydrograph in KP gate classes Instagram page. You guys can go check over there and see all the images that, uh, that are possible in different different conditions of uh, hydrograph. So let's come back to the next CSER paper. So here the question both the statements are right option D is the right answer. Now next question which one of the following does not represent a flat gently sloping a flat gently sloping relatively smooth rock surface formed in the zone between high and low tide levels. So which one of the following does not represent a flat or gently sloping relatively smooth rock surface formed in the zone between high and low tide levels. Answer is easy. Here abrasion platform uh, is kind of the one form in this particular way. Then comes the uh, shore platform is also a, a flat surface between high and low tide situation. Where is this one? Spit platform is not, uh, does not represent a flat or gently sloping uh, surface which is relatively smooth rock surface formed in the zone between high and low tide levels. Okay, now next one, match the river and its coastline configuration at the mouth. So over here you can see uh, <coughs> the different Mississippi, Nile, Ganga, Brahmaputra and Amazon. These are the different rivers and the coastline configuration is what we have to find out. When it comes to the coastline configuration, uh, we know all these river mouths, they, uh, all, all of them have delta formation over there. And this delta formation depends upon the uh, active, uh, whether it is a tide dominant or a wave dominant or a river dominant. Uh, activity happening over there. So if you can answer, I will wait or I will go further. Okay. So here we know that Mississippi is a uh, highly indented coastline with multiple extended digital distributaries because it is a uh, river dominant river delta actually forms over there. Now, a, a highly indented coastline with multiple extended digital distributaries are associated with Mississippi River. Then, yeah, Mississippi River. Then comes the uh, Ganga Brahmaputra. We know they are associated with tide dominated coastline with elongated peninsulas separated by tidal creeks oriented roughly perpendicular to the shore. So, this is what is defined over here. Then Nile is generally arcuate, smooth shoreline with two slightly protruding distributary mouths are present in the Nile. Amazon, uh, uh, whereas Amazon over here consists of estuaries with complex of large and small islands are what is present in the Amazon. So this is also a very easy uh, question. I will not say it is easy, but if you have an idea what is... Uh, like what is happening if you know what is the delta deposition or feature particular picture associated with that I guess I have a more questions are coming from the same uh, section delta related questions okay okay this was the uh, picture for shore, sloping shore platform horizontal shore platform and plunging platform see this is the delta deposition this is the Nile Delta Mississippi Delta this is Ron Delta which is wave dominated, tide dominated Ganga Brahmaputra Delta over here. So all the different types of deltas are mentioned uh, over here you can see. So each we know it has an arcuate shape. So we, if we don't even know about the coastline terminologies, if you know about this picture is very important. Delta related picture is very important. If you know that you will be able to answer. Next one, which one of the following terrestrial biomes is uh, found in regions dominantly characterized by oxy soils? 
so what is oxysols oxysols means they are uh, lightly weathered soil uh, which are present in the intertropical region lightly weathered soil sorry highly weathered soil not lightly highly weathered soil oxysols are highly weathered uh, soil which are mainly found in the intertropical uh, regions so this contain uh, <coughs> very few weatherable minerals will be often uh, present they are often rich in iron and aluminium content or oxidized minerals will be there iron aluminium oxidized minerals are primarily present in the oxysols so over here evergreen tropical rainforest this is the tropical situation so this is where we get the oxysols actually so you this soil terminology different types of soil formations uh, compositions are very important so you guys please revise those terms before going into the examination now an assertion and recent question sediment transport limited systems are characterized by sediment deposition and storage uh, then the sediment transport limited conditions occur when sediment volume or size exceeds the capacity of the flow to transport it this is the question so answer over here is uh, both are assertion a and r are uh, actually over here sediment so this question is also related to uh, geomorphology part both uh, assertion and reason are correct and reason is very uh, very much explanation for the assertion sediment transport limited system it is characterized by the sediment deposition and storage then again this condition occur when sediment volume or size exceeds the capacity of the flow to transport it then only sediment transport limited conditions occur it won't be able to transport the amount of sediments from it next is darwin's paradox refers to what is darwin's uh, paradox darwin's paradox defines an anomaly so it's an anomaly defining an anomaly of ocean so at a, a particular region where there is a huge amount of animals present a huge uh, expansion of uh, ecosystem is present over there but the amount of nutrient uh, 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 in that particular area is comparatively poorer so how is that possible that is what is defined by the uh, the darwin's paradox theory actually that's the darwin's paradox uh, in a nutrient poor ecosystem there is a huge uh, <coughs> reef coral reef ecosystem formation is happening always coral reef ecosystem is associated with a nutrient poor ecosystem no like where the tropical water we when we studied in oceanography about the uh, nutrient supply we saw that in uh, uh, around uh, tropical water the nutrient content is much lesser and also near to the surface also the nutrient content is much lesser so where do we get coral deposits coral reefs coral reef ecosystem is associated with tropical water and near to the surface so that is actually a nutrient poor ecosystem which is having a coral reef uh, uh, ecosystem over there so that is what is defined under darwin's paradox so here uh, the uh, this is the fourth option will be the answer highly high productivity of coral reefs in apparently nutrient poor condition that is what is defines the darwin's paradox okay again another question from delta match the deltas represented in the figure with the dominant processes shaping them this is the question different uh, it, uh, actually here it was a mistake a kind of uh, question they even in the question over here there are two options which are the same you can see both option 4 and option 2 a option is tide wave and tide river river wave so here if you were uh, uh, like and the answer itself is 2 or 4 this is the answer picture a defines uh, tidal deposits because here here the deposition is happening in this particular way so that is actually tide delta tide dominant delta here this is wave and tide dominant delta this one is river dominant delta river is protruded into the ocean so this is river dominant delta 
here it is wave dominant delta because the sediment deposition is happening parallel to the coastline here sediment deposition happening perpendicular to the coastline so it is tide dominant this is wave dominant this is river dominant here it is tide and river uh, sorry tide and wave dominant delta so if you go you can go for option 2 yeah option 4 uh, either way the answer will be right <coughs> in india an area is categorized as dark when its groundwater development rate is estimated to be so what is this groundwater distributed development rate the groundwater development rate So when it comes to the groundwater development this groundwater development rate is uh, uh, can be defined by an equation the it is simply groundwater level of groundwater development is equal to net yearly draft of water net yearly draft of water divided by utilizable resource utilizable resource for irrigation irrigation multiplied by 100 this gives the groundwater development level or level of groundwater development is provided by this particular equation net or yearly draft into you divided by utilizable res uh, resource for irrigation multiplied by 100 and if this value is less than 65 percentage that means we call that area as white if it is greater than 65 and less than 85 or in between 65 to 85 we call it as a gray area if it is in between 85 to 100 we call it as a dark area so in an area annually we will calculate the level of groundwater development over there by using this particular equation net yearly draft divided by utilization utilizable resource for irrigation multiplied by 100 and if that percentage value is less than 65 we call it as a white area then in 65 to 85 is gray 85 to 100 is dark so over here in the question they have asked about what we call uh, what is the percentage value between 65 to yeah in an in india an area is categorized as dark when when it's water groundwater development uh, a rate is estimated to be 80 between 85 and 100 this is the answer between 85 and 100 then only we will call it as dark okay next question identify the cloud types choose the correct option so they have given uh, four three different terminologies of cloud so i'll show you the picture uh, we have discussed the different types of clouds in the class so over here we know the high clouds are cirrostratus cirrocumulus cirrus middle clouds are altostratus altocumulus low uh, low cloud is stratus stratocumulus and cumulus and nimbocumulus then vertically developing cloud is cumulonimbus cloud this is the terminologies that we have discussed so here in the picture in the question so first one the high cloud it should be whatever is higher 
high cloud category that should be the answer over here so a is zero cumulus a should a will not be cumulus here yeah, zero uh, cirrus a is uh, zero cumulus is the answer then b is uh, alto uh, b will be alto cumulus terminology and c is strato cumulus so answer will be b this will be the answer okay so here if you won't be able to understand uh, picture much detail very simple from the option you just have to check the right option like which one is high which one is low and which one is middle you should know you have, uh, you have to memorize that classification of cloud and its definition and then you have to understand what is each level cloud defines okay next is flooding is more common in the eastern ganga plains in the bihar plains in comparison to the western ganga plains up plains because river channels in the eastern ganga plains are shallow in nature yes in uh, eastern ganga plains or in the bihar plains the river channels are much more shallower than the up plains rivers in eastern ganga plains are characterized by a high sediment load yes by the time it reaches the eastern ganga plains it brings a lot of sediments along with them so uh, here the sediment uh, load in when it comes to the bihar plain is much higher eastern ganga plain average rainfall is higher in the catchment area of eastern ganga plain yes in rainfall is higher in bihar area than the up area so uh, average rainfall is higher in the catchment area of ganga eastern ganga plain than the western ganga plain rivers in the western ganga plain are characterized by higher stream power yes river in the western uh, ganga plain is uh, characterized by higher stream power stream rho g q yes density acceleration due to gravity discharge and slope so all uh, discharge will be higher over here so hence in the western ganga plain are characterized by and slope is also higher over here so high stream power in the western ganga plain than the eastern ganga plain so all the four options are correct so is there any option for that 1 2 3 and 4 yes all the four options are correct choose the correct option so option d is right <coughs> plunging sea cliffs affected largely by swell waves suffer relatively minimal erosion by wave action due to wave which terminology plunging cliff uh plunging sea cliff affected largely by swell waves in class we discussed what is a swell wave what is a plunging cliff uh, terminologies in detail we have discussed suffer relatively minimal erosion by wave action due to the wave reflection right because of reflection uh, a less amount of erosion happens in the plunging sea cliff cliff so this terminology is associated with uh, uh, reflection refraction i mentioned it yesterday also how important is that you and you have to revise about those terminologies before going into the examination hall now match the column 1 and column 2 so i hope you guys are following and the audio uh, and the video is clear for everyone uh, i actually in live section always live section is la it likes uh, for few minutes it will be lagging so uh, whatever doubts you have you mention it when i uh, when i watch that uh, i'll explain it uh, even if it is about the previous question we'll explain it in uh, it over here okay next one hot and rainy through uh, match the column 1 and column 2 about climate and copens category a direct a very direct question uh, every year minimum one question will be there from this set this is the only one question asked from the copens classification a four mark question a c part question in june 2021 paper in uh, uh, june 2022 paper there were two questions from this set so they can ask more number of question they sometimes they only ask one question from copens classification so you have to understand each terminology each abbreviation what does it up each abbreviation means and then you will be able to answer hot and rainy throughout the year is af hot deserts are defined by bwh then uh, the next one 
uh, mild in winter hot in summer is de defined by c w a then hot and excessively rainy in uh, season means a m okay i have already discussed this in uh, last 2022 paper discussion class also we discussed i uh, revised about copen classification and in class also in detail we have discussed about the copen classification and i have given materials defining the copen classification identify the glacial feature and find the correct match okay so this uh, in this examination they have asked uh, two different set of questions from uh, glacial terminology so before going to that we know some uh, options are periglacial some defines glacial post glacial glacier fluvial terminologies so this is the periglacial environment where before glaciation period this is the situation before glacier glacial okay this is the periglacial setup there is river uh, flood plains are present over here a smooth uh, slopes and everything then comes the glaciation type during glaciation it causes formation of uh, deeper u shaped valleys develop over here truncated uh, spurs start developing sharp valleys arete start developing cirque formation is there horn develop over here then uh, moraines formation takes place deposition happen then after this next event is post glacial uh, glaciation period so you can see all this valley is completely filled with glacier during the uh, glaciation period after the during the post glacial period glacier uh, glacier has been retreated so you will get hanging valley over here uh, there is arete formation scree horn uh, yeah they have mentioned hanging valley over here truncated uh, spur uh, picture you can see over here lateral moraine terminal moraine ground moraine all the terminologies then tarn is the lake associated with glaciated environment then uh, cirque formation all this will be ex like cirque and everything you can see after the uh, post glaciation time during the uh, retreat of the glacier then only you will be able to see formation of these features in detail so this exact picture is what is shown in the net csir paper so always you see there are two textbooks uh, in uh, uh geomorphology from geomorphology they ask in net examination they use same pictures from those textbooks actually summer field global geomorphology summer field is one of that textbook from which direct questions like they take pictures from that uh, textbook and they'll paste it as a question so please refer the textbook like now for this year paper it's not possible if you are preparing for the De december paper you can refer the summer field global geomorphology textbook for a uh, detailed analysis and study of uh, geomorphology and also this image is from fundamentals of geomorphology by richard john hugget so this picture is uh, directly you can see the question in the question you will get to see the same picture this is the same picture in from that textbook so fundamentals of geomorphology by richard john hugget uh, global geomorphology by summerfield these are the two textbooks that you have to refer for geomorphology questions related to uh, net csir paper in uh, geomo in geological survey of india geo scientist exam also they ask questions from these textbooks okay chalo let's solve the question so we know this is arete over here this is corn horn and this is uh, um, hanging valley and this is truncated spur very easy direct question so if you have ever referred those uh, uh, textbook request uh, textbook you will be able to answer so a is truncated spur b is hanging valley c is horn and d is arete option this is the right answer okay moving downstream a concave upward longitudinal river profile what will you get if you move downstream a concave sorry concave upward longitudinal river profile so this uh, river profile terminologies and everything it is directly given in summer field 
a complete paragraph is about this single section. So, reading some of it is actually very important for uh, any competitive exams. This summer field terminology is very important. So, we know that when you move downstream a concave upward longitudinal river profile, its channel slope decreases. Okay, its channel slope decreases. This is the answer. Uh, moving downstream a concave uh, upward longitudinal river profile, its channel slope decreases. Mean sediment size increases, sediment storage decreases, discharge decreases. So, here answer option 1 is the right answer for the question. <coughs> In conditional instability within a range of temperature profile. Okay, this question is from atmospheric science, uh, atmospheric science part. So, here they have asked about the conditional instability situation. So, in atmosphere there are uh, conditional instability, stable atmosphere, instable, unstable atmosphere situations are there. So, when it comes to conditional instability within a range of temperature, a wet air parcel is unstable and a dry parcel become stable. We have discussed this in class, what is dry adiabatic rate, what is lapse rate, what is uh, moist adiabatic rate and how the with the uh, different temperature variation and uh, depending upon the dry adiabatic rate, moist adiabatic rate and uh, lapse rate, how an atmosphere becomes stable, unstable or conditionally unstable terminology. So, here answer is A, wet 693 is the answer, wet dry air parcel is unstable and dry air parcel becomes stable in a conditionally instable situation within a range of temperature. For a given value of mixing ratio, the virtual temperature is linearly related to air temperature. That is statement A. Okay. Statement B, cloches clapeyron equation provides saturation vapor pressure as a linear function of air temperature. Yes, both st the uh, statement A is actually correct. Statement A is uh, correct, but statement B is false. Cloches clapeyron equation we discussed about glaciers clapeyron equation is thermodynamics part of geochemistry so it does not the answer is uh, c statement a is true statement b is false choose the incorrect option in the following statement collision collisions mechanism for growth of cloud drop in warm cloud depends on we discussed about two different mechanisms defining the formation of a, uh, a cloud drop or a raindrop or a uh, crystal ice crystal to form there are two different mechanisms we discussed collision collision mechanism is one of that so among these four option collision 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 uh, mechanism for growth of cloud drop in warm cloud depends upon liquid water content Yes, it depends upon, so it depends upon liquid water, okay, they have asked incorrect option, okay. So, this is correct option, relative difference between velocity of large drop and velocity of smaller drop, yes, collision collision efficiency, yes, a a applicability of Raoult's law, no, Raoult's law is uh, a different one, it defines the relationship between partial pressure of solvent. Uh, in a solution uh, terminology and it is equal to the uh, vapor pressure of uh, pure fraction, uh, pure solvent multiplied by its small fraction. So, it does not have any relationship over here in the collision collision mechanism. So, this is the answer. <coughs> Match the following instrument and parameter measured. Another easy uh, question over here. Pyro, pyranometer and pyrheliometer. Okay, here these two are actually used for measuring the solar radiation, but in which uh, one is to measure the direct solar radiation and another one is to measure the diffused solar radiation. What is the difference between diffused solar radiation and direct solar radiation? A diffused solar radiation means we know that when a sun ray passes comes into the atmosphere, it will be scattered by the air molecules and everything, all the molecules present in the atmosphere, interaction happens. So, if those scattered 
radiations when it reaches to the atmosphere these scattered uh, solar radiation is what is called as diffused solar radiation there will be unscattered direct solar radiation falling over the earth surface that is called as direct solar radiation diffused solar radiation direct solar radiation per heliometer is to it is to measure the solar radiation it is a solar radiation sensor pyranometer is also a solar radiation but <coughs> pyranometer is to measure the diffused solar radiation per heliometer is to measure the direct solar radiation okay then we know thermometer is to measure temperature anemometer is to measure the wind speed only the pyranometer and uh, uh, perheliometer is the confused term Shara. horizontal winds clockwise turning with uh, accent in the northern hemisphere determines Gaussian distribution vertical trajectory Ekman, Ekman spiral you see horizontal wind has a clockwise turning in the northern hemisphere if, uh, if if it is having a clockwise turning means this particular turning why cl clockwise turning because of it is sh shifting towards its right side and that's because of the that is what is the Ekman spiral defining okay thunderstorms that produce tornadoes they have very little uh, cloud to ground lightning no thunderstorms that produce tornado that what they have rotating updraft they have rotating updraft yes okay that's the peculiarity of thunderstorms that pro produce tornadoes that's that is what is tornado updraft is rotating now statement a a northern arabian sea is highly productive during winter yes it can be high it is a, a kind of highly productive it can be highly productive during winter next one uh, intense upwelling occur due to winter monsoonal winds in the northern arabian sea no intense uh, weathering is sorry intense upwelling is not happening during the winter monsoonal wind so what happens is during the summer season here this is the uh, low pressure this is the low pressure zone and th so this is the low pressure and this is high pressure zone so the movement will happen in this particular way so and i we know arabian peninsula over here so here where in the northern hemisphere there is a right side ekman transport will happen and causes upwelling over here in the exact opposite situation during the uh, winter monsoon in this particular situation more and more uh, downwelling will happen along the arabian peninsula over here okay so the answer will be in this way like the option a is true but b is false this is not winter monsoonal wind this is summer monsoonal wind during summer monsoonal wind uh, intense up, uh, upwelling occurs in the northern arabian sea okay match the microorganisms with their environment or properties diatoms dinoflagellates coccolithophores cyanobacteria okay first one is uh, dino diatom diatoms are temperate and polar water with silica shell then uh, dinoflagellates dinoflagellates are tropical and uh, subtropical waters where we get the dinoflagellates coccolithophores are associated with tropical water with calcium carbonate shell cyanobacteria is warm water gyres uh, blue green algae i hope it is uh, clear for everyone yes agash i can see you giving answers Hello, next one uh, the statement a stronger coastal upwelling occurs of peru during el nino statement b warmer than normal sea surface temperature in eastern equatorial pacific ocean during el nino stronger trade winds in the pacific ocean during la nina 
so here it's very easy all the statements like b and c look at the statement stronger coastal upwelling occurs of peru during el nino no during el nino upwelling stops in the coast of peru so statement a is wrong look at statement b and c warmer than normal sea surface temperature in eastern equatorial pacific ocean during el nino yes uh, in the during el nino situation the pacific warm water uh, wedge that is situated in the western pacific ocean is spreading across the pacific ocean so from uh, western side to eastern side the temperature become much more e equal or the eastern part will also become warmer than the normal situation so this situation this statement is right statement c stronger trade winds in the pacific ocean during la nina yes trade winds are much more stronger during the la nina the la nina is a normal uh, walker circulation is the normal circulation in the pacific ocean so uh, a much more intense no, uh, normal circulation is what is defined by the uh, terminology la nina so if you have doubt about this specific circulation you can find a video in our uh, youtube channel about the specific circulation i have explained it in the youtube channel also and my students so we have already discussed in both oceanography and atmospheric science section we have discussed about el nina la nina walker circulation terminologies next chlorophyll choose the correct statement Okay, so from the following option, this is actually we can say associated with uh, associated with remote sensing uh, portion. So we have to choose the correct statement. Chlorophyll B absorption is maximum in no. It this is wrong. Increase in bloom intensity results in decrease in dimethyl sulfide emission. High concentration of dissolved organic matter result in decrease in the no. there is no relation uh, dimethyl sulfide does not absorb yes it does not absorb solar radiation in the sea water this is the correct statement sorry i thought this is remote sensing it doesn't have anything related to remote sensing this is normal oceanography related question find the correct statement of uh, elements and their generic profiles in the ocean what are the options copper zinc Ca carbon oxygen nitrogen okay oxygen nitrogen chlorine bromine okay so first one we we now the concentration stays constant with depth so that is among the option uh, it should be chlorine chlorine uh, concentration stays constant with depth then concentration increases with depth concentration increases with depth this particular picture no this obviously it is of oxygen and nitrogen it increases uh, at, uh, at this particular there is an oxygen maximum situation then decreases and then increase situation over here so answer will be c from if you know uh, this curve you will be able to give the answer option c is aluminum and manganese there is a decrease in the concentration with depth increase in the concentration with the depth is cop for copper and zinc this is for chlorine and bromine also so if you know this single picture what whether it defines oxygen then you will be able to answer reynolds number it's very easy reynolds number is the ratio between inertial force to the viscous force that is what is called as Reynolds number. We have discussed Reynolds number in uh, ocean in uh, geomorphology. Uh, also in hydrogeology, we have discussed about uh, Reynolds number in detail. Which one of the following statement is incorrect about helium? Tritium actually. Tritium? No, sorry, helium. Helium three. So incorrect statement. Uh, any given time, three a helium to four helium ratio. in sea water will be greater than that in the earth's atmosphere three helium is released by mantle outgassing in the volcanic activity yes that is also a uh, correct statement we have to choose the incorrect statement three helium is produced by cosmic ray bombardment in atmosphere abundance of three helium is much less compared to four helium because 
later is rapidly produced no this is the incorrect statement about helium so they uh, usually ask about uh, uh, a one or two questions will be from uh, 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 geochemistry so you better study about uh, this helium trish, uh, hydrogen isotopes are uh, one of their favorite uh, part they ask about hydro hydrogen isotope also helium isotope also strontium uh, rubidium relationships then uh, they also ask about samarium niobium based on the age versus average depth relationship graph given below what is the approximate age of sea mount of height 1500 so from the bottom it has a height of 1500 sitting at a depth of 2500 that means altogether 4000 meter below the sea level so you just have to calculate the age so here at a depth of uh, 4 kilometer the age is 20 million years very easy you just have to find out 1500 plus 2500 look in the curve yeah option b is the answer okay which one of the following biogeochemical process indicate anoxic condition this is the anoxic condition a n n anaerobic ammonium oxidation that is this an a n n a m o x anomox anaerobic ammonium oxidation anaerobic ammonium oxidation means simple oxidation of uh, oxidized ammonium uh, to dinitrogen gas this is this reaction and oxida oxidization of oxidized ammonium to dinitrogen gas formation using the nitrate as electron acceptor using the nitrate as uh, ex electron acceptor uh, the under an anoxic condition oxidized ammonium will go, will convert into dinitrogen gas this reaction is what is called as anamox reaction and that is the only anoxic condition the one that undergo in the anoxic condition we have discussed nitrification nitrogen fixation ammonium oxidation in this paper itself so please read about nitrogen cycle in the in detail nitrogen fixation nitrogen cycle in detail all the processes that is coming under the under that nitrification nitrogen fixation anamox reaction ammonium oxidation all this denitrification all the processes in the nitrogen cycle is very important this is actually associated with we can say it's a normal a biogeochemical cycle so you can uh, better please uh, uh, read about this biogeochemical cycle of nitrogen which is very important in a single paper they have asked two three questions from that okay match the item in column one with column two uh, mid atlantic ridge rodriguez triple junction 90 east ridge in the indian base ocean macquarie triple junction and a very easy question so first one mid atlantic ridge uh, which one i'll say this one will do first 90 east ridge is an seismic ridge then rodriguez triple junction is in the central indian ocean okay these two uh, uh, is clear then the next one mid atlantic ridge is extending from iceland in the north to bowet triple junction in the south a r a r b is p c is s and the Macquarie triple junction is in between Australia, Indo Australia, Pacific, and Antarctica plate. Very easy question. Okay, next one uh, match the ocean current. Okay, so this is the only question from uh, ocean current in this particular set. Usually they ask a minimum two questions from surface water current, but here in this paper they have asked only one question from surface ocean. Uh, current uh, terms actually so here again uh, agulas current is western boundary current in uh, indian ocean gulf stream is warm current in the north atlantic ocean Kuratio current is warm current in the uh, north pacific ocean california current is the cold current in the north pacific ocean okay 
E C equals to match the isotopes in column 1 to the ocean atmospheric process in the column 2 that they are used to study. So, another question, uh, I guess this is the last question of this section. So, here it is first one is uh, uh, hydrogen, 2 hydrogen deuterium is used to, to find out define the hydrogeological cycle. Ocean atmosphere process may be used hydrogen deuterium to find define hydrogeological cycle then carbon 13 is to define the primary production uh, then nitrogen uh, 15 nitrogen is to define the denitrification 18 oxygen to study the paleo temperature so this is the yeah that is the final question so uh, we have discussed the 2021 june paper as a whole few questions are left i won't be able to completely finish the questions so if you guys have any doubts related to this set you can uh, uh, we can discuss that in the chat box over here after the live also you can chat uh, use the chat box for discussions and everything or if you want uh, want to contact us you can use the phone number or details given in the description box uh, you please contact us for the for the uh, our trial classes or for regarding any uh, mock test inquiry or study material inquiry please contact us using the details given in the description box if you require a trial class please fill the forms over given over there uh, we will provide you a trial class or any details we will call back to you so whatever you want uh, we, you can discuss it with us related to geology so uh, next day we will start defining the 2020 net examination paper discussion will be done so that may not be tomorrow your day after tomorrow we will begin that so please subscribe to our channel so that if we make any change in the schedule you guys will be able to know the live section schedule or another video that we are going to upload uh, we, you will get notification right so please shed, uh, subscribe to our youtube channel follow us in our instagram uh, telegram and uh, uh, facebook profiles for uh, updates related to geology so thank you so much uh, i am riku raju let's meet in another live section or an another video of uh, kp gate classes welcome uh, all for joining us over here thank you so much